All right, today we're working with solving uh, quadratic equations using uh, the square root method or using inverses, essentially. Um, so for this particular lesson, we're going to start simple and look at something that we could probably figure out without using any graphs or algebra. Um, x squared is equal to 9. Most people should be able to identify that 3 squared equals 9. Fewer people might recognize, of course, that negative 3 squared, negative 3 times negative 3, also equals 9. That's something that we can see if we graph. Notice, again, this parabola uh, is a standard y equals x squared parabola. So we have a uh, you know, rate of change of 1. Then we go over 2, up 4, over 3, up 9. So we could already see, um, again, this is obvious. But we're going to make some connections here to uh, some things that we've learned before. First, again, observe that in order to find the value of x using algebra techniques, we're going to apply the inverse of x squared. And the inverse of x squared is the square root of x. And the square root of x uh, squared and the square root of 9 is going to maintain our equality. We did the same thing to both sides of the equation. So the square root of 9 is 3. We know that. But here's where things get a little different. We actually now have the absolute value of x equals 3. So essentially what we have to do is account for the fact that x could be negative or positive, And we do so by defining the square root of x squared as the absolute value of x. Notice how that changes or affects my graph. Um, in the graph, we can see that what used to be a parabola equaling 9 is now an absolute value graph. You can see y equals absolute value of x equaling 3. And notice the solutions are still the same. Here's x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. So we start by taking the square to both sides, which gives us the absolute value. Why do we have to do the absolute value? because it retains our two solutions. Both the positive and the negative x equal 3, and therefore x could be positive 3 or negative 3, just like we did with absolute values before. Um, this lends itself uh, then to um, basically, um, sorry, let's get to this. <laughs> Forgive me. Um, this enables us to uh, solve even more complicated uh, um, equations. Not that this is much more complicated. Instead of being x squared equals 9, it's uh, x minus 3 squared is equal to 9. So the first thing we want to do is we want to graph and predict. I kind of got ahead of myself here, but uh, basically remember we're expecting a parabola to be shifted to the right 3. Um, so to get home, it needs to go right 3. So of course, we start from that vertex, go up 1 over 1, we put down a point. And then we go back 1, up 1, we put down a point. Over 2, up 4, over 2, up 4 and we can make our parabola through those points. I very carefully made sure that I crossed at 0, 9 because I could tell that negative 3 squared is 9 and that'll be the y-intercept. So then we also, after labeling the vertex, can graph the line y equals 9, which is right here, and then we can use the graph to make predictions and it appears as though when x equals 0 or when x equals 6 we'll have solutions to this equation. So uh, we can do this over time, you'll be able to see a graph like this in your very own mind's eye without having to draw it out. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to get at here is uh, the ability to solve things by understanding their nature rather than by just going through a procedure. But since this is an algebra class, we're also going to learn the algebraic procedures for solving the same equation. As before, we're going to take the square root of both sides of the equation. And the square root of 9 is 3, that's no problem. The square root of x minus 3 squared is guessed it, the absolute value of x minus 3. The absolute value retains <coughs> the positivity and negativity. And just as before, we can express the opposite of whatever is inside the absolute value. And instead of distributing it into the parentheses, I multiply both sides by negative 1 to get x minus 3 is equal to negative 3. In other words, x would have to be 0 to make that true. And on the other side, we remove the absolute value and just leave it alone and we add 3 to both sides to get x equals 6. Neither of these should be a surprise since, excuse me, I'm sorry, <laughs> I got a cough. Neither of these should be a surprise since we already saw those solutions on the graph. Um, but if we do want to check, we could also check by writing down 6 minus 3. 6 minus 3 is 3, 3 squared is 9, so that works. And then 0 minus 3, that's negative 3 squared, also equals 9. So the solutions are obvious. But of course, we could also put this into um, Desmos. <coughs> uh, 
and, and a variety of different technologies to verify that it's correct. But since this is a simpler equation, you would understand we wouldn't go through so much rigmarole to check. Um, nonetheless, here's another example, and uh, um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this example except to say the process is exactly the same. We start with an equation and we try to visualize the solutions graphically. This is going to be a parabola that shifted left 2 and up 4, opens down. So we go left 2, up 4, and then we go over 1, down 1, over 2, down 4, and we draw a parabola. We also draw a line at y equals negative 5, producing this line we see here, and we could predict the solution is going to be x equals negative 5 or 1. And then we take the square root of both sides, but the problem is, right here, we can't take the square root of both sides because what's on the left-hand side is not a perfect square. Besides the fact that it's negative, um, we've got this 4 that's sticking around. So we need to do some cosmetics here. We're going to solve for the x squared, or solve for the squared feature. Start by subtracting 4 from both sides, and then we're going to take the opposite of both sides. Then we're in a position now where we can take the square root of both sides, get the absolute value. So once we separate the absolute values, we can just do our algebra 1, find the solutions x equals negative 5 or x equals 1 as predicted. So really, the only thing that's new from what we did before is we're graphing parabolas instead of absolute values, and we're adding the part about taking the square root of both sides. So once again, we do not take the square root of both sides until we've taken our equation in the given form and express it in something squared equals something else. Otherwise, the square root method will not work. So I hope you find this helpful. Um, what I'd like you to do, if you can, which you should, is uh, um, study in your packet. This is another example here for you. Um, fully worked out, fully realized. Um, here are some really simple quadratic equations that you can work on solving. Um, and uh, here's another set. Um, actually, no, we'll just work on this for the weekend. Um, do at least half, and do more if you if you want if you want to practice. Actually, let me take that back. Oh no, you can go ahead. Just, <laughs> I will uh, tell you on haiku which which ones you should be doing. Um, and I apologize for the stammering here at the end. <laughs> um, but uh, thanks for watching.